Landing an Airbus A330 at Calgary International Airport is usually not a huge task, but today the wind had a little challenge for me. As it is the case with most German airlines, we are allowed to fly most approaches manually without the thrust turned off. We do this to keep our flying skills sharp, so every pilot feels comfortable flying the airplane even in more tricky conditions. Doing so, we all feel very comfortable flying the plane manually, so if something unforeseen happens, we have more space to think about the issue at hand. On this approach, there was nothing unforeseen. Only the crosswind made the landing a little more interesting. As you can see here, the nose is pointing this way and the runway is pointing that way. But let's start at the beginning. Getting close to the airport, ATC gives us an approach we have to fly. This is the route we'll be flying to the descent onto the runway. These approaches can vary depending on wind direction and the traffic at the airport. ATC makes sure we all keep safe distance from each other and are all well separated on approach into the airport. For example, in my last video, flying to Calgary, we had to enter a holding pattern while approaching the airport, since there was a lot of traffic inbound to Calgary. So ATC kept us waiting for a few minutes to safely sequence us into the approach to Calgary. But today we didn't have to enter a holding pattern, since traffic wasn't too heavy coming into Calgary. So ATC cleared us onto approach into Calgary via the Burko Star onto the ILS 29er. These names stand for waypoints that are marked on our approach chart. They can also be so-called VORs, which are fixed radio beacons on the ground that send out a VHF signal that is received by the plane and will give us a direction to the said waypoint. These waypoints on an approach chart also come with height constraints, so we have to be at the correct height when passing the waypoint. ATC would also give us a certain speed to fly, so we don't get too close to other airplanes flying the same approach. All these instructions will then guide us onto the instrument landing system, which will then guide us down onto the runway. To comply with all these instructions, we have to configure the plane in the correct way. As you see now, we're setting flaps 3. Flaps increase the lift of the wing at lower speeds, so we can comply with the speed given by ATC. This can be tricky when you configure the plane too late since it's hard to lose speed while descending. Additionally, setting the flaps will increase the lift, which makes it harder to descend. So it's very important to configure the plane early and know all the speeds and height constraints on the approach so we don't end up being too high and too fast. At approximately 2500 feet, we let the gear down, as you can hear. The wind noise in the cockpit increases quite a lot since the landing gear disrupts the airflow around the aircraft. This is not only loud, it also slows down the aircraft substantially, as it acts like a giant air brake. In the cockpit we jokingly refer to letting the gear down as throwing the anchor, since it's the most effective way in slowing down the aircraft. So you can use the gear to lose some speed if you're coming in a bit fast. Now the aircraft is fully configured for landing. The only thing left to do is to go through the landing checklist to make sure everything is set correctly. After that the cockpit goes silent and the pilot flying and the pilot monitoring concentrate on the landing and all the instruments. One thousand. At 1000 feet the plane has to be exactly at the right height to speed and establish on the correct glide slope onto the runway. We call that stable. If the approach is unstable, so we are too fast, too slow, too high, too low, we have to perform a go around. Everything is fine here. 400. Hundred above is the call out where we are hundred feet above the minimum position altitude. By not being in low visibility operations, we have to have the runway inside, see that it's clear, be on glide. So we call out continue. Minimum. continue. Now watch where the plane is pointing and where the runway is. The nose is pointing to the left. This is due to wind gusts coming from 100. the left. So we come in a slightly sideway. Shortly before touchdown, I have to decrap the plane so 40, straighten the plane out 30, to keep it on the center line. 20. Retard. 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 Three. After the main wheels are on the ground, we open the reverse thrust to slow down the aircraft which gets called out by the pilot monitoring. He also calls out the successful deployment of spoilers, which happens automatically after the plane detects wheel spin on the main landing gear. Thanks for watching, everyone. 900 remaining.